So I've had a bit of a change of plan. So there's going to be two videos for the helmet and two videos for the armour. So helmet, planning and building, and then a separate video on painting. And the armour will be the same, one on planning and building, one on painting. Makes more sense to split them up as they're two quite different processes. As far as design and inspiration go, the design is the design. It's T45D power arm helmet from Fallout 3. Sort of some influences of Fallout 4, but mostly Fallout 3. So that's the design. The design itself, the actual pattern, um, is thanks to Daniel Lillygreen. Look him up on Mini Factory. Simply some of the best um, cosplay Fallout 3D designs I've seen. Work really well, designed for use in sort of domestic 3D printers, well planned, well thought out, um, and just look superb. Then just looked at hundreds of pictures online, you know, Pinterested T45D, looked at all the cosplay guys stuff, and picked up the Fallout 4 art book, uh, which I can't recommend highly enough. Um, this isn't your usual crappy you know, let's just knock out an art book and charge people extra because we throw it in with the limited edition. Absolutely chock-a-block full of brilliant stuff. Uh, I think I picked it up for about 15 quid off Amazon. I even I actually use it in my day-to-day -day teaching um, design at school um, because of the, the design process is shown in there so well. It goes into loads of elements of all kinds of stuff. If you've any interest in Fallout, just grab a copy, spend a few days looking at it. It's, it's really pretty and, and obviously you know taking images from the games um, I play on a particularly low-end PC so it's pretty good for stopping standing still and looking at armor for long periods of time whilst you wait for it to catch up. Some of the decisions we made we wanted to put lights in it so that we could see one where we were going and two so it had more of a feel of the real thing and then voice changes uh, which have yet to happen and also we decided to go without visors because we needed to be able to have the eye protection had to be airsoft safe um, and that was only going to happen if we wore goggles underneath um, so there's enough space within the helmet to wear a goggle so it's better to have nothing in um, the visor section when it came to the build itself um, Russ printed up all the major parts for me he's got a Wimbo printer which did a nice job um, he printed it with PLA on the finest setting and all the big sections came out really nicely. And the second print on the yellow helmet that you'll see in the pictures um, there seemed to be some slight, slight separation it wasn't sort of adhering particularly well um, but that's, we solved that that wasn't a problem. There were some rough areas on both prints as you'll see in the pictures but with a bit of sanding and also the fact that this was going to be a very rough set of armour um, these were, had been out in the wasteland for a long time so areas of roughness became areas of rough rust um, which worked nicely. Once I got the first few pieces and you'll see in the pictures I just couldn't help but grab a hot glue gun and knock them together just fitted perfectly uh, no warping really well nicely designed like I said before um, so it all sort of slotted into place. So within a week I had one completed um, held together just just hot glued just to see how things went and had a trial one with the lights um, the main head torch worked really well the one on the side wasn't quite so happy with in the end I think that's going to end up as a sort of trashed Geiger counter or something similar took it with me for the first test fit on Tim and um, needed some tubes for it did a Facebook shout out and Richard came up trumps with some hoover pipe for the filter pipes um, which worked really well. Interestingly enough, once we'd, I'd fitted those and got them tight enough and close enough to fit the helmet in between the shoulders without restricting too much, after about 12 hours, the tension that they put on it actually pulled all the glue apart, and so the whole faceplate fell off. But, um, grabbed some Gorilla Glue two-part epoxy, um, took the whole thing apart, took the whole of the yellow one apart, and just epoxy the crap out of everything and that's held absolutely solid. If I was doing it with ABS which is what I normally work in then I'd use like an ABS slurry. Um, thanks Rob Josie for the tips on that about a year ago. Um, 
which works really nicely. If you're working with ABS and do 3D prints, look up ABS slurry. Cheap and really handy. Um, but the epoxy glue works really well. Held them all together. Also coped with some of the issues on the yellow one nicely where there's sort of slight separations. Uh, chucked loads of filler in where there are minor gaps um, just to smooth out areas, slight stepping, things like that. Just used like LD45 body filler, car body filler. Uh, worked really nicely. Sanded it up. And um, that was it really for the build. Uh, chucked some foam inside so it wasn't resting on our heads and wasn't uncomfortable. Uh, made sure everything was clear. There was plenty of space for us. They were quite comfortable. Riveted in some straps. Um, so there's sort of a chin strap with a big plastic clip in. Um, and then set about sorting the lights out. So the lights, basically I went and bought a couple of um, sort of wide LED torches from Poundland. Uh, ripped the LEDs out, ripped the guts out, rewired them, popped a switch on there, put a battery pack in, um, fed the drilled a hole through, fed the cabling in, so that all sits quite nicely and works brilliantly. We actually first wore them at night um, as we approached uh, the camp and um, all the crew said you know, lit up the area really nicely and we could see quite clearly so that was um, The voice changes we're, we're working on at the moment, um, just using some voice changer kits from Rapid and they're working okay but there's a bit of a feedback issue so eventually when it's finalised they'll be mounted separate, the speaker will be mounted separately um, in the body of the armour and then there'll be a big jack plug socket so when you put the helmet on you put a big socket in gives it that sort of retro sci-fi feel I think which is quite nice and that's about it um, pictures at the end of this which is Gabby doing her best bobblehead impression um, everybody says we should do an action figure of that but I'm not sure grubby jumper and bobblehead works um, thanks again to all the guys um, you'll see the thanks um, at the end um, and links below to everything else keep an eye out the next video will be building the armour and then after that there will be one for building and um, painting the helmet and painting the armour after that Thanks again.